Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, give us a like, ring the bell, check out our social media. Today on the podcast, my friend, bass player from Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, Mr. Sean Coos. Hello, how you doing? I am doing great, brother. How you doing, man? I am here to the fullest. Ah, thank you so much, man. Yeah, uh, I'm stoked to have you on, man. We've been friends for a long time and yes. uh, we've done all kinds of crazy projects together and uh, I'm just I'm stoked to have a conversation with you today about all the wild shit you've done with your career. Happy to be here. Yeah, man. So yeah, we were uh, we were actually just talking right before uh, I pushed the button about uh, playing some piano. You said you're a classically cha- trained pianist. Yeah, that's correct. I've been you know through my parents and all. I've been play, uh, playing piano since I was three. Oh wow. Yeah. So you know, forced the lessons that whole deal. My parents were both musicians, so that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Uh, I, I learned how to play piano when I was like five, but I I never kept up with it. You know, it's just basic, you know, chopsticks kind of stuff that my grandma taught me. It really is the most complete instrument, I believe. It's a percussion instrument, and uh, you just got your full range of everything. You c- it's it's all right here, and you could see the entire range of music right there. Yeah, you know, oh, here's yeah. your bass over here. It it is a percussive in, percussive instrument, but also you got you know you could see it all, all of it. It's a beautiful thing, man. The the piano. I uh, as an engineer, I'm always making sure it has full range and a big wide stereo spread in my mix. So, and I put it in the subs and everything because there's just so much that a piano can do covering all the different harmonics that it covers and everything like that. I mean, it is like you said, a wide ranged instrument. Absolutely. So you were saying maybe we'll uh, we'll try a little piano Perhaps. jam or something like that Perhaps. after the podcast. Yeah, maybe a little bonus uh, bonus music uh, video kind of thing that we'll put together here at the end of this. Why not? Yeah, that'd be fun, man. That'd be really fun. I dig it. So you were saying, um, so you were playing with the uh, the outfield when the pandemic hit, right? Yeah. Um, the way that came about. Uh, uh, the guitar play the guitar player who wrote all those tunes had passed away a few years ago, uh, John Spinks, and I had met Tony, who's the bass player and the singer, uh, on um, one of these package '80s deals. I was playing also with Kaja Gugu and uh, Bow Wow Wow. Oh, cool! Uh, and man. also on the bill was ABC Modern English, uh, all these '80s acts. And I got uh, I got to when I started playing with Tony, we became really good friends. He became my best mate. And um, so after that, that tour, he goes, would you like to continue playing with me? And I said, hell yeah. And so for the past few years, I've been doing the outfield. Uh, I play elect- electric guitar on, on that because he's the bass player as well. It was a three-piece band. And uh, <clears throat> so we were doing an 80s cruise just last year. It was uh, March 8th to like 14th, something like that. And then as we got on the ship, we were hearing all these th- possible rumors of the shutdown, uh, hearing about other cruise ships being quarantined. People couldn't get off. And we go, ah, yeah, whatever. As we get on the ship, day by day, the information's coming in. It's, this thing's just blowing up worldwide. And by the end of the cruise, uh, we're coming in. We're, we're getting word. We're, we're one of the last ships coming in uh, the, before everything shut down. And we're lo- I'm looking around on deck. We're, we're the, the last ship coming into Miami. And then when me and my wife got home, two days later, it was uh, St. Pat's. That's when they just shut the whole state down. Yeah, That's crazy. So it, but it kind of crept up on us because we weren't on land at the time. And you're just hearing little tidbits here and there. You're not really getting the full scope of what was happening. Man, you guys lucked out because I know there's a there's a few ships that got like trapped out at sea and everything. They weren't allowed to, they weren't allowed to dock in different ports. As there was rumors of this happening, I'm going as long as the booze is there, <laughs> I'm, I, I'll live here. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> right? I'm sure you spent plenty of time living on a cruise ship as it is doing the the rock and roll and the '80s rock cruises and stuff like that. I I'll tell you what, that's something else. I spent two or three years in my life working cruise ships doing top 40 duos and also piano bars that was in um 86 to like 88 yeah that's pretty cool Mm, they were all out of miami yeah and uh and i got off the ship a couple times and spent time in uh san juan and also in jamaica and loved it 
Yeah. Oh, I bet. I bet Jamaica's fantastic. A uh, little dangerous. Yeah. For the for a white boy, but still. <laughs> but I but I got to know a lot of uh, great uh, musicians, reggae musicians there, and and they they looked after me. That's awesome. Yeah, I always wanted to try to do some of those uh, those cruise ship gigs, man. I know a lot of friends of mine go and they do those 80s, 80s rock cruises, and I just want to get a job engineering on those things or something I'll like that one this. time. I'll tell you this. The reason. The reason I got off those couple times is to take a break from it. It is a tough, even even as a youngster then, it's a tough thing to uh, live where you work. Yeah. You got to mind your P's and Q's a bit. You know, I fucked up a few times. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you got to, yeah, you, there's always someone watching. Yeah. Your employer is, you know, it's, it's where you live too. So it can get tricky. And also in those days that we didn't have cell phones and that type of thing, there, there really was zero communication with land unless you wanted to do a, what they call landline where you could phone home. It's like $30 a minute. Oh my gosh. So you pretty much, you get your information at, 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 uh, at the various ports of call, Yeah, you know? Because yeah, nowadays it's different, you know, with satellites and everything. But, uh, yeah, you're just uh, out there alone. There's no radio. You're, you're not hearing what's on the radio or anything. That's so crazy. You're, you're a bit isolated, but it was fun. Yeah. It's like it's, it's strange. It was probably kind of nice, too, to be a little isolated from the chaos of the world. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. That's awesome. Yeah, those cruises are fun. I went on, I've only been on one cruise my whole life, man, and we went down to... Uh, like uh, Mexico, Puerto Vallarta, uh, Mazatlan, Cabo San Lucas, kind of that yep. crazy booze cruise kind of trip. I think I was only like 19, but the second we in international waters, no one gave a shit I was 19. We got so wasted, man. Nice. It was fantastic. Nice. Did you get seasick? Uh, no, I got alcohol poisoning a few times, <laughs> but... <laughs> of course. Uh, I don't remember. You probably could. I, I might have gotten seasick. I don't know. I was drinking so much tequila the whole time. Ooh. Who can tell? You know, we were we were degenerates. We walked in and we we're just like, look at this beautiful architecture, and like, I mean, this place is magnificently. That's a bar, <laughs> you know. And we we're just like, they they drag had to drag us away to do all the safety uh, 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 meeting or whatever beforehand. Not the good safety meeting where everybody goes to smoke pot. The 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 one where everybody muster call. Yeah, muster yeah. muster call. Is that that's what, it what it's is? called? Yeah, yeah. Uh, as an employee, I had my own station. I had to go to to assist passengers and get their life jackets on, and uh, yeah, you had to do it like every single cruise and once a week. You'd have to do it, and sometimes stand at your position for hours. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It's all that's up. Wild. To, it's up to the captain. Yeah. Yeah, safety's important. Yes, but, it is. Yeah, we were pissed we had to leave. The, we were just wanted to get drunk the whole time, man. And it was wild. I, dude, we were looking for pot, right? And we went on this freaking bus tour. And the tour guide of the bus uh, of the bus tour through uh, through Mexico, I think it was I think it was Puerto Vallarta, he shut the bus tour down to run off and get us weed. <laughs> He was just like, I'll be right back. And like everyone, we just stopped at a convenience store or whatever. And everyone just had to wait. Like the whole tour had to wait for, for me and my friends to buy weed off the guy. Priorities, It was, it was man. wild. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, this guy's out of his fucking mind, man. What's he doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, it was a fun trip, man. Super fun trip. I highly recommend doing those cruises to anybody who hasn't been on one. They're, I'm, they're ridiculous. I'm thinking about doing Alaska here soon. I want to do the Alaska thing. I do. Yeah. Sure. There's like good whale watching and stuff like that too, yeah. right? Yeah, and it's just beautiful and as you, as you can relate to right now, cooler weather. Oh. <laughs> What's it like 120 today? <sighs> Jesus. I know, man. That last heat wave that just came through was brutal. <sighs> brutal. And we've been doing uh I've been doing the Area 15 stuff, so I've been outside like, you know, setting up speakers and and taking deliveries from trucks and stuff outside, and it's just like, God, kill me now, man. This is insane to be working out in this stuff. Oh, yeah, friggin' heat. It's the desert. What are you going to do? Uh, we we moved here. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best place to do what we do, though, you know, the as rest, entertainers. The rest of the year is gorgeous, though. So, yeah. You know, it's just these couple of months. Yeah, you suffer through it, and then everybody else is posting pictures of the snow, and they're freezing their balls off all over the place, and you're like, I'm barbecuing at four in the morning. Yep. It's perfect outside. Oh, yeah. You know, it's the gives and takes. The gives and takes, man. I always end up taking a trip up to, uh, to Oregon once a year, get some tattoo work done, like usually in August when it's just like I can't stand the heat anymore, and it's just perfect up there at this time of year. It's blazing right now. Oregon? Yeah. Yeah. And, and Washington, they're getting un... Uh, 
insane heat waves up there right now. Oh, really? Yeah. It's just everywhere, huh? It's global warming, I guess. Yeah, you know, I mean, we all knew it was coming. We all knew it was coming. It's been heating up every freaking year it's, uh, consistently. You know, it's a pss- we did it in the 80s with the hairspray. Yeah. The ozone's gone. Uh, it's all the 80s rockers' fault. I'm blaming it on them. It definitely has nothing to do with the gas companies. That's or one of like me, that. I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I bet you had some wild freaking hair back then, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. Flock of seagulls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back when you were playing with, uh, what, Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, man. Yeah. That's some pretty cool stuff, playing with Joan Jett. Oh, how, how, did that, how did that work out, um, man? And how'd you get into the I band? I was a black heart for 10 years. Yeah. Um, the way it works out, probably most of... Uh, if, it's kind of the same old story. Uh, I was living in New York City, and I was doing... I was playing with Peter Noon and some oldie acts, and then playing all around the city. And, uh, you know, one of the guys I, I played with on Bleecker Street, down there, a real popular street, uh, uh, you know, in a cover band, uh, he was a guitar player with the Black Hearts, and, you know, one day, so, hey, you want to you wanna audition for Joan? <laughs> and I go, yeah, and uh, went to the audition, and that was it. That's you pretty know? cool, man. And she's great. She's awesome. She's one of the boys, and one of the best rhythm guitar players I've ever heard in my life. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I love Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, man. That's just awesome. Real fun music to play. The crowds just dig it. And uh, yeah, a good cool. time. A good time. Did you ever end up in any of the records or anything like that? Or Yeah, yeah? the later ones. Obviously, okay. none of the really big hits. But there was uh, the Fetish, the, that record. I, was, I played all, everything on that. And I also arranged the uh, Mary Tyler Moore theme we did, uh, Love Is All Around. Oh, cool. And uh, that was a, it was a minor hit as well, yeah. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah, Joan Jett, that was cool, man. And you actually uh, ended up getting a, a cool little uh, IMDB page out of the deal, too, with Joan Jett and the Black Hearts. I see there's a, a couple uh, live concerts here, but... What I'm more interested in is uh, Boogie Boy. You got a credit as an actor on Boogie Boy. Yeah, that was a cool movie. It, w- it never got real big, but uh, Tracy Lords is in it. Actually, oh, cool. yeah. Uh, but uh, what we did, Joan was one of the stars as well, and they used the Black Hearts as her, she was a, mus- a, a, a singer in the in the movie, and we were her backup band. But we got some speaking parts and all out of it. It was nice. That's cool. Where did they film that in, like, L.A. still? It was or, in, uh, uh, yeah, in uh, North Hollywood. Ah, uh, dope. Dope, dope, dope. Yeah, that's fun, man, shooting a Hollywood movie. How was the experience shooting a, shooting a movie in Hollywood? It was uh, in and out, two days, fly in, yeah. get, it, get her done, and uh, 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 long days, so. though. Yeah. Get there, it's the old, uh, get there at 7 a.m., do some makeup. Now go sit in that trailer till 2 p.m. and don't eat anything or you'll or touch your face or you'll mess up your makeup. Oh, of course. That's ridiculous. <laughs> they, they just got to have you ready because, uh, you know, they don't know how fast it's going to happen and they don't want to waste time because time's money, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah and to just call you on the spot and get you out there the second they need you and everything like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's fun, man. That is fun. Yeah, so, uh, and another fun thing, uh, I know whenever I first moved to town, and we, uh, I think when we first met, we did uh, an album with the Bargoyles, some That's friends right. of ours. That, that was over at your house, I believe, right? Yeah, that was my very first version of this studio, uh, and man, just such a lower budget system that I had over there, but... Uh, well, the I, record sounds great. Yeah, I, I actually know. found a little bit of it, and... Uh, I was gonna jam some of it with us. It's real heavy stuff. It's great. Yeah, here's the like the title song, Bargoyles. That oh wait, my player closed. My player closed. Here it is. So yeah, we were recording everything on a uh, what a a freaking that that sucker, the M Audio Project Mix IO. Man, those preamplifiers are terrible. But it's my first system. It was fun to do, man. We had a big, you know, good time at the house, just messing around. A good time for sure. Yeah, man. And I did another album with those guys. Um, and obviously, girl, that she wasn't on the second album, but it's Brooklyn singing, or from Brooklyn. Uh, what did we did a uh, album called Cirrhosis, and it was like an all 
all death metal band kind of thing. And that's not to be mixed up with the band Cirrhosis, right? No, that was, yeah, that was the band Cirrhosis. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. I think it was their first album or whatever oh, that right, we did. Oh, right, right. Yeah, and that was a freaking wild uh, recording party too, man. Uh, uh, my buddy Mucus, man, just a drinker. And I was like so insistent that like, let's try to get some stuff laid down before we start boozing it up. <laughs> And uh, and he was just like ah uh, shaking hands and stuff trying to because he really tried to come in sober and everything like that but there was we were all just such partiers that he was just like I I really need some tequila or something to to smooth my uh, jitters out because the Bands of Roses wasn't just a, a name for a reason you know yeah those right, were, right those guys right. were drinkers uh, I remember on the Bargoyle sessions a lot of PBR yeah <laughs> that seemed to be the uh, that's that was a flavor of the day yeah man. I was into, uh, I think that was when I was collecting the bottle caps. They had those, uh, the uh, cards on the top of the bottle caps. And so I was like insistent on getting a full deck of cards. And I actually found it in my shit when I, when I on moved. On the inside? On the inside like or on top? Yeah, on the inside. So you have to, you can't tell what it is till you pop the top. And it's like you get the 18 packs of bottles. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I don't know how much of that shit I drank. <laughs> but uh, I ended up with, uh, I think I actually ended up with two full decks of cards. I found the bags of them like organized into 52 bottle caps. When I moved recently, it got shoved into an old closet or something. I, I wanted to do some kind of art piece out of it or something. But Was it a contest? where if you got the full deck, you get something or just... Uh, I don't know. I think it was just like, you know, you get, crack five beers and you got a hand. Or I don't know what their gimmick was. Nice. But I thought it was interesting, you know, when I was in 20 nothing years old or whatever I was back then, you know, just partying it up as much as I can. And, uh, but yeah, I, I just recently as we were doing the move, just tearing all my past life out of all these little cubby holes in my house right. i was like i forgot all about this ridiculous thing i did and uh yeah sitting in the art studio now we're just talking about doing like maybe gluing it onto something and yeah, doing something some, with it. Something. some kind of find some crazy drinking pictures and party stuff and just kind of make a little collage out of it or make something. a frame yeah the good old days man the good old when we didn't care and i wasn't uh, these are the good old <laughs> days right now. Yeah, yeah. No, it's always it's always a great time, man. I think every day is fucking beautiful. Yeah. So no more drinking, but uh, you know, loving life, man. Living it to the fullest, as it were. <laughs> See how you did that? <laughs> uh, you know, that's the whole concept of it, man. I always like to just talk about having a good time and and loving life, man. Why not? Yeah. So. You got some interesting freaking tattoos too, man. I know we were talking about them before uh, before we came in here, but especially we were talking about your Assassin's Creed tattoo, and you have this thing right here. It's, it's Dying Light. It's, Dying a, it's Light. a zombie game. I'm a big, big uh, video game guy. Um, I'm a PlayStation guy. I just, I just can't get enough of them, you know. And the technology and the, the amount of information they put on it down, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, I I freaking love it, man. You see, that's how we were talking about. You saw my living room. I got all the different consoles and the yeah. VR and everything out there. And yeah, I got to check out this Dying Light game. If it's such a good zombie, I love zombie games, man. And if it's such a good zombie game, you got a tattoo. It's got to be amazing. It's amazing. Um, it's a. Uh, I don't know if it's an Xbox or I. I obviously, it's a PS4. Uh, but I I love it. I love it. Nice. Yeah, no, it says it says uh, Xbox. Oh, it's older, huh? Xbox 360, it is, it is, PlayStation yeah. 3. There's yeah. a t there's a two coming out too. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I'm not Let's sure. See here. I'll look it up real quick and give it the, the date that number two comes out. I know one of the ones I really like was um, Left for Dead. Oh yeah. And they got the third one. It's been like 10, 11 years since Left 4 Dead 2 came out and they have the new Left 4 Dead coming out, which is actually called something different now. And uh hang on, so let me find Dying Light 2 uh and see when it's coming out here and then I'll I'll look it up. It's uh gosh, what is the name of that Left 4 Dead thing? I'll find it. I'll find it in a second. But yeah, the uh release date for Dying Light 2 coming up is uh where is it january was delayed before the end of 2021 is it so it'll be out this year yeah yeah december 7th 
Get the there old one. Get, get the old one. Get up to speed on it. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely have it's to incredible. download it, man. I I freaking love those games, man. And then yeah, the uh, the new Left 4 Dead is incredible looking. Like the whole thing ends up being uh, like randomized challenges in every single uh, in every single level. They have like a card system, and you get cards as a player, and then the the game gets cards, and so it just randomly shuffles like five challenge items oh. and then different bosses and different kind of special zombies and then you get like five random things or you can choose a loadout i guess and uh it just yeah it's supposed to be a completely unique experience oh yeah it's back for blood back for blood is the uh, the new left for dead 3 i guess for licensing purposes nice but i've been looking forward to that game for literally 10 years i mean i just played the crap out of left for dead and left for dead 2 so much fun bring four of your friends in and just random zombie level forever it's it's just beautiful um you know uh through the years there's a couple of video games that just have been just left the imp total impression on me and i'll i'll say like grand theft auto uh san andreas yeah i think that just that was a literal game changer and also my favorite game of those western uh red dead redemption dude i got lost in the second one uh you know what it became a job yeah I had to feed the horses and every day and, and everybody's complaining and want things i go like i should be getting paid for this you know <laughs> you, you remember you know what i'm talking about he's yeah. up, they're all they're up in that camp and they, they, you got to feed these horses and every and everybody's giving you attitude i go i should be getting paid for this but but the first one ridiculous that's two yeah two is super big game man yeah. and i was i was like uh yeah 87 uh, percent of the way of like completing that game like a hundred percent you know like the storyline was done i was trying to like get all the berries and do all the card games and friggin huge game man I, I I had to stop for a while, and I always said I'd go back, but then I think about doing it, and I'm like, I remember Don't where I left Don't open that door. Up. You got to let it go. That yeah. For me, though, that first one, what a game. Yeah? You know? yeah. I got to try the first one, because oh, I only played the second one. It's, I consider it the greatest game ever. Yeah? But, yeah. Oh, dude, the second one was incredible, so I'm sure the first one has to be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Rockstar Games, right? They do yeah. not disappoint. They do nope. not disappoint at all. I, uh, Manhunt. Oh, Man right. Manhunt 2. How about those two? Dude, Please. that was that was freaking beautiful, man. Walking around as a serial killer, murdering people. You yeah. Know, like, what a ridiculous game that was. Yep. And did they ever remake that or, like, remaster that or anything like that for the newer systems? I mean, that was, like, PlayStation 2 days, wasn't so. it? I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a good one to, to remaster. And it's probably, probably hasn't uh, held up over the years, though. Who knows? Yeah. It's. I finished both of them, so um, yeah, I'm 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 set. I'm I'm all set for that. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a crazy game. It was sort of like uh, Metal Gear Solid, but you're a serial killer, right? You're like having uh, to sneak the first around. One, first one, yeah, you're released from prison, and yeah, to uh, it's 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 a kind of a sport. People are watching. That's and, right. And, and you're facing gangs and uh, different different style gangs and you got to get through all of it and then the second one you were two different people you had a, a mental you you schizophrenic thing oh really? so maybe you're, i never played the second one yeah it's it's it was pretty pretty weird it, you're, it's kind of the same idea you're let let out of an institution but then you become at certain points the other guy the another person but it's very strange very strange oh i'm gonna but, have to check that out yeah Manhunt 2. Manhunt 2. That's dope. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, speaking of Rockstar Games, is the uh, the GTA 5, man, online. What a cool experience that is, man. I know mean, my friends have gotten into doing some of the bigger missions, and, like, my buddy's got a freaking yacht and all this stuff. Like, he's really, he's like a high-level criminal on GTA 5. I have that, but just for the... The story I mode. I haven't started up yet. Yeah, just for the yeah, the, the uh, just not not online, you know. Yeah, yeah. dude, the I, online's where it's at, man. Like the story mode's beautiful, of course. It's mm -hmm. another GTA, but uh, I mean, it's such a cool like. Um, I, like I can't wait till they do the next one. Hopefully, they have it in virtual reality, man. Because the uh, just the the simulation, you know. I mean, it's it's not perfect by any means, but it's so close 
to anything that we have of like a real simulated city life experience where you can go in and you have all your cars and your money and your clubs and uh you know and there's all this automated ai running around around you i, I don't know where these people find the time to make these things Dude, it takes forever. Teams. I guess, and it's teams, hundreds of people, I think. Yeah, like, thousands God. even, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's God wild. Yeah, and I think they've just been upgrading GTA. Every time I, I don't play it that often, I, I'm just such a busy dude these days. Uh, but, like, every time I log on, it's like a big update, and they're just like, here's a whole bunch of new stuff that you can do in GTA Five online. New clubs, and, like, I think the last time I logged in is, like, whole casino that they designed nice. and it's like, I don't even pay for this stuff. You know, it's just like, this is how, this is the game. Now there's like, you have a casino to run and you're like, Why, when did this happen? You know, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing that they just keep making it better and better and better. Oh uh, yeah. I, uh, I look forward to whatever the next one's going to be GTA six or whatever. I don't even know, man. I never looked it up. Let me type in GTA six into the interwebs and see what the hell's going on there. New map leak is fake. Insider comments on newly leaked map. News and rumors. I guess it's way out, huh? There's not even anything legit. It's just like, the, the iPhone 15 is going to have, <laughs> you know, holograms popping out of its butt. Uh, yeah, uh, cool. No, it's all just rumors. GTA 6. I'm sure it's going to be beautiful. It'll be a PS5 game or, you know, the new Xbox. Yeah. Those PS, that's, that shit's pretty dope, man. They're getting me on uh, Final Fantasy. You ever play the Final Fantasy games? No. Uh -uh. No? Oh, man. They did the remake of uh, Final Fantasy VII for PS4, and now I guess they're going to... They only did, like, the first disc. It was, like, a four-disc game when it came out for PlayStation. Yeah. And, uh, and so they did, like, kind of the first disc, the first world, and there's like, we'll get to the rest of it later because it's such a huge undertaking to, like, make that look as beautiful as they made. But now it's going to be, you got to buy a PlayStation 5 to get the, right. <laughs> the update. Mm -hmm. Sons of bitches. That's how they get you. Yeah, that is how they get you, man. They get you good that way. So, yeah, well, wow, well, yeah. Well. It's just uh, video games, it's just a chance to step, step out of your life for a moment and, and just live another kind of a little fun life, you know? Yeah. A little fantasy life. That's take, it. Take a break. You put uh, put this life on pause for a minute. You know. Yeah, it's it's beautiful to be able to do that. Just escape. I was doing uh, Final Fantasy 15 during the pandemic, which is just a huge, massive game like Red Dead Redemption 2 or something mm -hmm. like that. Where it's just like, yeah, you're gonna play this. I think I was over 100 hours by the time I stopped, and I still hadn't beaten the game. I was wow. just kind of doing all these side quests and shit. But yeah, you just get lost in it, man. You're like, was that really six hours of my life? It's just, <laughs> what time is it? I was just going to play for a second. It's well spent. It's well spent. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's fun, though. Yeah, I do love it. I love it a lot. I've been, uh, I got the VR stuff. You ever do any of the VR stuff? No, I'm, I'm going to get there. Yeah. I got some out in the, the living room, man. If, you're, if you have time afterwards, you're definitely welcome oh, to check it out. Yeah, maybe we will. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, during the pandemic, all that free time, but when 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 the when the switch came back on here now I'm just scrambling around learning songs for this band this band this band I just don't have quite as much time to explore all these new things you know Yeah that was definitely a thing man like uh I'm glad I did everything I did during the pandemic cuz it was like such an opportunity to really uh get a bunch of shit done or like like this start this new project this podcast that I started mm -hmm. and uh yeah I just uh because the second it switched back on in June, it was just like, yeah, you're back to it, man. Uh, no life again. Working, working 24 hours a day, and you know it just doesn't end. During the pandemic, uh, my wife, uh, she works at uh, one of the casinos on the Strip. Uh, she, you know, she was out uh, uh, of work as well, and we had time to do a lot of things that we never could before. We went. Um, to locally in the area, places we wanted to go, like, and we just loved like Death Valley. Uh, we get out to Boulder City a lot. We went to, we go up to Utah. Things that we normally just never had time to do. Yeah. So it 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 was a good time to to get some of that that done. You know, you know. 
Yeah, we did a few camping trips. I really enjoyed it, man. I did some nature video shooting and stuff like that. Stuff for the channel that I actually haven't... I'm almost done editing, but I'm. it's taken me forever to actually get time with it. With the with the freaking podcast and, and work and everything, it's like uh, just pumping these things out every week. It's actually pretty time-consuming. I, I figured doing one a week would be... Uh, easy to maintain but it's like it's actually pretty uh pretty good challenge to get a whole video pumped out and recorded and ready to go every week yeah so doing the auxiliaries has been like constantly like oh, whenever i have the spare minute to edit them so that's uh, some kind of a it's a nature yeah we're doing um we're doing a bunch of nature so we just you know we're like what do we want to do with our lives when the pandemic was happening it was like uh, it's this opportunity to kind of take steps to change in your life so of course i'm back in doing the engineering thing again and whatnot for money but we really want to get this youtube channel going to where we can uh, monetize it and make money off of it and we've been going out doing camping stuff and um and just filming nature and trying to bring like 4k video back from all these different um sites so we went to like arizona arkansas we went to northern california we're going to utah at the end of the month and uh and we're filming a bunch of stuff like that, um, doing, like I said, the, the yoga, the meditation, chill lo-fi with, like, nature backgrounds and stuff like that. Stuff that does well on on YouTube. Nice. You know, not trying to reinvent the wheel or anything, just trying to have a new existence, man. You know, mm-hmm. something that we really enjoy. Because we got a great setup, bro. Great setup to go camping with. And, uh, and just go anywhere we want. Nice. Big giant, uh, like eleven person tent with an inflatable mattress and a wow, uh, uh, solar power battery to inflate it with and shit and a little portable toilet and it's just like home is anywhere. It's, like, it's home. Yeah, home is where the toilet is. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that thing is worth every penny. By the way, man, that freaking portable camping toilet. You cannot put a price on this. Yes. It's so fantastic. We, uh, especially not having to go outside in the middle of the night to use the restroom. Mm. You know, it's like, ah, you know, I'll walk two feet that way. Really? Be done with it. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a beautiful luxury when you're out there for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. So, but you come home and you're like, oh, my real bathroom. I love it so much. Sanctuary. Yeah. Yeah. So you were telling me you were uh, doing some um, some hikes just up the road in Boulder City, right? Yeah, uh, the, there's that uh, that railroad. It's um, it's it was built for the when they were building the Hoover Dam. Uh, they had to they had to de- develop the concrete elsewhere and then take it by train into the dam dam area. And they um, they they built this this tunnel these tunnels it goes right along the uh, shore of lake mead and uh it's now a hiking it's uh, like hiking trails and it's just it's stunning stunning the views and all and uh it's right there by it's right near the dam obviously uh where that little visitor center is when you go down to the marina it's right there it's amazing we did that a few times we love that also did the camping up in uh up in uh mount charleston a bit we loved doing that that was great. Yeah, Mount Charleston. I haven't been camping up in Mount Charleston. Yeah, up Lee, Lee Canyon, up that way. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we like um, our favorite spots up in, like, Utah and stuff like that. We really like getting up there. It's so beautiful. Uh, man. Bryce Canyon, that area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nice up there, man. We do the, uh, yeah, the Coal Up Reservoir and stuff around, um, um, what is it? It's St. George, near St. George area. It's that's, only like three hours outside of yeah, Vegas. Yeah, that's the that's the Virgin River, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's so much out there. Mm-hmm. You can just, I've even I've driven up there and we were like surrounded by mountains and we go, let's go to that one right there. And we just drive up the mountain and pitch a tent mm-hmm. somewhere and spend the weekend. I play up there uh, a couple times a year uh, at um, in Brian Head, at the, oh, the ski Brian resorts nice. up there. Love it. Just love it up there. Yeah, we did um, one of our, our anniversaries in February, so we went up for our anniversary, and it was snowing, and we got this small little cabin rental for a good price on Airbnb, and we just hung out in the snow, and yeah, it was just a beautiful time up there in Brian Head, man. It's just, uh, the only thing is the lack of oxygen. Yeah. yeah. We bring, and, and, and when I'm, pl- you know, uh, I, I do some singing up there, I, you start singing a song, and like, by the second verse, you 
You start to see stars <laughs> going like, where's that canister? <sighs> Oh, dude, that's exactly it, right? You the little green can of yeah, air. Yeah, yeah. And you freaking hit that every once in a while yeah, to keep your it's, lungs fresh. It's like, uh, what is it? It's at least 11,000 feet. Yeah. There, yeah. It's up oh, there. Yeah. It, it's, uh, yeah, move slow. Pace yourself. <laughs> yeah. No, we just hung out and uh, watched people ski. I didn't know. We should have rented some skis and checked it out, but we were just like, Trying to have a chill time, you know. You weren't trying to do too much activity, drinking hot cocoa and just watching people fall. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice. So yeah, Brian Head's beautiful, man. Yeah. But that's it, you know. That's what we love going out and just doing the nature thing. It means a lot to us, and we definitely want to get to the point. Like we've gotten some good pelicans together to like throw our gear on planes, and we want to start traveling like even outside of the country and shooting videos and doing little adventures and stuff like that, and. Alaska. Alaska. That sounds amazing. Um, I, with Joan, we played up there a few times. We always did the, uh, at the Alaska State Fair in, uh, in Palmer, and it is just gorgeous. Cold. Yeah. But gorgeous. Yeah, Alaska is like real wild country, man. Oh, yeah. That's real I stuff. I mean, that's, uh, most people get around by plane. Yeah. Yeah, bush pilots and all, yeah. People have their, their groceries delivered in by plane. That's wild. Yeah. yeah, I was watching uh, or listening to a podcast, uh, probably Joe Rogan, about with the survivalist that likes to hang out out in uh, in the woods in a cabin for just months on end, and kind of trap and and collect food and stuff wildly. But then they also fly in some of his food. But I guess one time he, they, it was just there was too much the weather conditions or whatever, and they couldn't get food into him for a few months. And he just got emaciated. Like, he had rabbits and shit like that, but uh, but there's just no fat on him. That long, huh? Yeah. Ooh. And so I guess he, he was, like, uh, hunting beavers for the fat in their tails, and he was just eating pure fat. And he's like, you don't have any idea how good. Like, I understand it sounds gross. He goes, but whenever you're, like, emaciated from lack of fat, it's the most delicious thing you've ever consumed. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, like, pure fatty beaver tail. I just figured... For me, anyhow, I mean, I, I can't get stuck out there with no beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to happen. Uh, yeah, he probably had a few beers, but I, I'm sure he ran out after that if he's running out of the, all the good food, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's beautiful country, though, man. I definitely want to check it out for sure. But that's, you know, that's the goal, man. You know, get to go see the world and get to go experience it all and film it and put it online and get paid for it, write it off on my taxes and... And exist. Absolutely. That'd be a fucking great way to exist, man. You know, I hope I get to, I hope I'm successful at it. It's going to take quite a few years, I'm sure, to really get it going. But, and you know, I mean, I live in Vegas mixing bands and stuff and doing rates for people. It's not the worst thing in the world. Not I'm at all. I love it. I love doing that too. So it's just, you know, life is good, man. Life's really good. It's a fantastic thing to be playing this game and having killer friends like you to play it with, man. Yeah. You know? It's fucking cool. I just dig it. I dig it so much. So it's a blast. It is, man. So, well, yeah. I think that's a. Why don't we just call it at that point, man? You know, it's been over thirty, almost forty minutes on the th on the clock. You want to do it? Yeah. You want to do a little piano thing or something like that? Um, if you're yeah. feeling it. Yeah, we can try to set it up and check it out, man. I'll pull up some. I'll pull up some plugins on. Uh, on the on the Pro Tools and let's see what let's we can just, do. You see what we can do if we you know it comes out it comes out and it'll be at the end of this sucker and then if it doesn't then it won't be at the end of this sucker. Sounds good. Yeah, you know. So this has been to the fullest. I love to thank my guest Sean Coos, amazing entertainer, super cool dude. <laughs> 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 Make sure you hit the subscribe button, click the like, uh, ring the bell, check out our social media. Peace.
Thanks for watching To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We air new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.